This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is time to talk some college football here on Covering the Spread because I'm not sure if you realize this, Ed, but a week from today, we're talking week zero. It is already that time of year. We are thick into it with college football today. We're going to talk to you, my Wednesday co-host, Dr. Ed Fang. Get his read on some college football win totals, breakdown, what his college football betting model looks like, and get you said for another fun year of college football. My name is Jim Sadas. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here as I am every Wednesday by Dr. Ed Fang. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com. You can find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. We're a week away from week zero. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Dorman's 2-0. And, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, my son and I were watching the game on Friday and they were losing one nothing to Freiburg. And, you know, they, they lost the, the best goal scorer in Europe, essentially, uh, over the offseason. And they don't have Gio Reyna back. And I was like, ah, it's going to be a long season. They're not going to be able to score goals. I don't know who's, who's going to get goals. And then and then they bang home a three in the second half. And, and now they're 2-0. So yeah. uh, that will give you a taste for some of my soccer hot takes. Uh, I had some other ones that uh, I threw at Bill Connolly on my podcast, uh, the football analytics show. <laughs> so we'll see if those uh, seem as bad as uh, as my take on Dortmund. Um, but anyways, I'm happy. We're in the kits, the two and zero, and uh, they still haven't they still haven't played Gio Reyna yet. So so maybe things are are looking up. They had they had key contributions from 17 and 18 year olds. Whew. Yep. I saw you and Bill tweeting back and forth, Bill Connolly of ESPN about. Dortmund is he a Dortmund fan too or is that just you so he is big into German football uh as part of his job so yeah. when he was at SB Nation he went over and did a really long piece on Bayern Munich and I think that was kind of the start of it um I don't think he's not a Dortmund fan but he would yeah. say he's a German fan and and so am I um I will wear the Dortmund kit now but probably when they get out of Champions League I, I mean I might actually have a, a Bayern Munich kit for yeah. for late spring because they'll probably be alive and and they actually look pretty good right now despite losing the one of the top goal scorers in Europe over the over the off season so you know I mean there's there's a wide range of I mean there's a wide wide range of ways to engage in European club football and so so yeah. we we definitely stick with the German clubs because we like them. Okay, I like that. So uh, we can, you know, check out the football analytics show to get. I hope Bill's takes on uh, German football too. You know, no, no, just, uh... <laughs> so the vast majority of the podcast was uh, was college football. Disappointing, you know. Who'd want to hear Bill Connolly <laughs> talk about college football? We could instead get European soccer thoughts. Yeah, well, he's, know, an ex- you know? he's really an expert on both. I know that's the fun thing. <laughs> that, that was that was definitely the fun thing. We could have we could have droned on about soccer for a while, but at some he point you got to cut it two off. Two hats. And... Yeah, he just he he wears both the hats very well. I mean, who can turn that down? So yep. you said that was on the football analytics show, correct? That's right. Okay, just check that out there uh, to get some more Bill Connolly thoughts, some more German football thoughts today here on the show. We will stick to the the boring side of things here at the college football analysis. We're going to talk about Ed's model, his college football betting model, what it says about this year in terms of win totals, and try to just get a, a, f- a feel for what that model, what goes into it, in case you are a new listener who doesn't know what goes into Ed's model. We'll talk about all that in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We once again are here every weekday, Monday through Friday, breaking down MLB, whatever it may be. We had Brandon Gadula on talk uh, PGA yesterday. We, the timestamp for that is in the podcast. If you want to skip over the baseball stuff from yesterday, check that out uh, in the podcast feed on covering the spread. Jump to the timestamp with Brandon to get his thoughts on the BMW Championship for some outrights and non-outrights as well. Tomorrow, I'll be talking some baseball and some NASCAR. And then on Friday, Tom Vecchia will swing by and break down whatever he wants to discuss from a betting perspective because I'll be at a bachelor party and will be unavailable uh, at the end of this week. Next, we can go to Ireland for the Northwestern Nebraska game, the most natural uh, place to host a Northwestern versus Nebraska game, because why not? I mean, when you can watch Northwestern lose by 12 and a half in Ireland, you got to do it, right, Ed? Shoot, I got to make sure I take that game as neutral. Yeah. 
Well, I don't know. It should it be though? Because one coach is named Fitzgerald. I know that like Scott Frost is like, you know, potentially, I, I don't know. He might be he Irish, Irish, but like Fitzgerald feels like it should be worth like three points in Ireland. That could be just me. I don't know. I'm not trying to encourage your model, but yes, that will technically be a neutral site if you don't want to count uh, the Fitzgerald narrative in Ireland. We'll talk about college football in just one second, but first NFL kickoff is still a few weeks away. You can get in on the action right now on FanDuel Sportsbook with their NFL super win bonus. Right now, anyone who places at least a $50 Super Bowl winner bet will get $5 back for each win their team has during the regular season. There are a ton of other futures markets available, the like team win totals, division winners, player props, and so many more. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the nfl must be 21 plus and present in select a estates only bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire seven days after receipt max free bet fifty dollars restrictions apply see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash rg in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER. Net. Let's dig in out of some college football. And Ed, I'm assuming a lot of our listeners have been listening to us and heard about your college football model in the past. They probably know what kind of goes into it. But there are probably some new listeners who may be listening here to college football for the first time and may not know what you care about when you're trying to model out college stuff. So what key things are you looking at when trying to analyze the strength of a team from a betting perspective on the college side of things? Well, I presume you want to talk about the preseason. Let's do it. In, in, in particular, right? So this season, I've kind of made the decision to change some things around. Um, I used to run a model that I believe is a little bit out of date. Uh, it is not uh, – college football changes, and you have things like the transfer portal, and you have teams like USC that are bringing in elite quarterbacks, elite wide receivers, and, you know, like you can either – put in a ton of work to try to account for those types of things. But I also do a lot of things with NFL and college basketball, and there's a lot of other things on my plate. So uh, I've changed things up. So instead of uh, on my site, um, there's a couple of different things I do. I, I still have a basic model that I use from uh, my own metrics. So every year uh, I have team ratings that are based on margin of victory uh, adjusted for strength of schedule. Those adjustments are made by the algorithm that, that I developed. And what in the preseason, I will take four years of team history and run a regression model to figure out where the team should be for this upcoming season. And uh, so it's a basic model. It's not going to be the most accurate. It's clearly not accounting for returning starters or what teams get in the transfer portal. I still do think it is useful to put in um in, in the model because it is different from a lot of the other kind of public models uh, that you'll see out there. And I, I do do strength of schedule adjustments pretty well. And uh, I feel pretty confident about that. Like for example, I have James Madison pretty near college football average. And a lot of the other models don't have James. So James Madison is the newest FBS team. They're, they're making the jump this year into the Sun Belt. Uh, I have them a lot higher than a lot of the other models. And I think that's because like, I'm adjusting for strength of schedule. And you, when you look at James Madison's results, you look at who they played, like they've been pretty good. Now, being FBS average is probably a little bit of an overestimate for James Madison because they did lose a lot of talent. But my model is saying program wise, like these guys deserve to be considered near FBS average. And if they are FBS average, they're going to essentially going to be at the top of the Sun Belt with the App States of, and the Coastal Carolinas of the world. Um, so I, I do want to acknowledge that, you know, things have changed. My model is not as good as it used to be. So on the public part of the site, I uh, take that model and I also take a couple of publicly available college football models that I've back tested. Um, and it's a combination of those things. So that's what's going on with 
uh, what you'll see on the power rank on the public part of the site. And, and those are the preseason numbers uh, that I use. One thing that I do hold back from members is uh, a, another preseason model in which I take win totals in the markets and then I adjust for who teams are supposed to have played. So I back out a rating that's consistent with the win totals for 131 FBS teams. So this is useful for, you know, week one spreads, right? Because I'm getting a rating and, you know, you account for home field, yada, yada. And the fact that I actually do not have Northwestern <laughs> as a neutral site. Um, I'm, this is why I'm glad I talked to you. <laughs> I, I make mistakes like this. And I think I, I, I think I just completely forgot to go through all the neutral games week week zero and week one. So really need to do that. Um, but so that is a model that is um, is something that I use. I, I save it for members of my site because I've actually found that to be the most accurate in predicting uh, the spread in games, uh, especially over the first couple weeks of the season, which is really what you need it for. But it's also not very useful when you're trying to bet against win totals because that rating should be exactly consistent with right with what the market win total is and and it's designed to be that way. And, and that's what my, um, yeah, I had to develop some methods in order to do that. So it's not useful for betting against win totals. So today we're talking about win totals. I'll be talking more about the public stuff that you can see on my site, which is a combination of my models and then some other public models that I back tested. So basically it, it's lean, it's depending on wisdom of the crowds. And that's something you've discussed a lot in terms of being a powerful tool for betting. Uh, why, yeah. for people who don't know that, why is that the case? Why is wisdom of the crowd such an important thing for us to integrate if we want to strengthen our numbers? I mean, that's a deeply philosophical question, Jim. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that on a true, <laughs> really why. Um, I do know that it works. Yeah. I do know that if I really wanted to save my edge, I should shut up about it. <laughs> uh, it, it honestly works. I mean, and there's a couple of different levels of wisdom of crowds here, right? The markets are one aspect of wisdom of right. crowds, and you have a lot of people betting on these college football win totals. And so there, there's that crowd. And then there's kind of the crowd of different computer models, and each one of them has its strengths, kind of like I tried to talk about with James Madison and, and then maybe the USC. Uh, each model has its strength. And, um, you know, it turns out the combination of most of them is going to be best on average. You know, for example, USC, I talked about uh, in in my numerical model, they've been kind of terrible under uh, under Clay Helton. And, and now they have Lincoln Riley. I think they're in the 50s. I think they're in the 50s in in Bill's S&P preseason. Uh, he's going to have a new one coming out. So so check that out when it comes out. Uh, they're 14th in my market model. So just to show you how different things can be, right. the market is clearly considering that he's bringing in Kayla Williams as quarterback, uh, Jordan Addison, the, the wide receiver from Pittsburgh, who who might be the reason that that offense exploded last year. I know Kenny Pickett uh, obviously went on to do some pretty good things, and and the coordinator, Mark Whipple, is actually at Nebraska. But you kind of got to remember that that offense wasn't very good before last year. No. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure about that hire. Yeah, uh, it was not good. Uh, Kenny Pickett was not good last year. Kenny was, Pickett was not good. Yeah, odd. Uh, but I think that it's uh, it's interesting that that you're leaning on smart people to kind of help guide things. And whenever you can have more smart minds influencing the way things go, I think that's always an advantageous thing for sure. So we'll be focusing for today on the win total model. That is the one that blends all that stuff in. And we'll talk about the other model like you said, next week when talking about the week zero specific games. Let's dive in here to some win totals over at FanDuel Sportsbook, starting off with the Big Ten side of things. we got some pretty big win totals. Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, all at nine wins or higher at FanDuel Sportsbook. So when you look at this market, Ed, any numbers stand out to you as being values in the Big Ten specifically? The one that I like most um, is, uh, is Illinois under four and a half. So Brett Bielmo came in last year and he kept a lot of guys on that team, a lot of super seniors and, you know, had a pretty decent five and seven season in, in 2021. But uh, as Bill Connolly notes, like they're hundred and third in returning production coming into this year. So they lost a lot of production on both sides of the ball. 
they don't bring the quarterback. Uh, Brandon Peters is, is no longer there after I think six years in, in college football, spanning like it. Michigan and Illinois. And the I don't know the quarterback position is they got a couple of other Power Five castoffs: uh, Arthur Satowski from from Rutgers and, and Tommy DeVito from uh, Syracuse. You know, really doesn't give you a a ton of confidence there. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, this this is probably actually the win total I like the most when when I was looking over this. You know, they're going to beat FCS Chattanooga, um, but like, how are they going to get over four and a half? Right? I mean. Uh, you know, they, 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 they do have like kind of toss up ish games against Indiana, North Northwestern. And uh, I cannot read my handwriting. I don't know what <laughs> the team is, but, but they, but they have a couple of toss up games. Sure. Um, you know, you kind of expect them to regress a little bit, you know, just losing so much, right. Beal a second year probably doesn't have it. Hasn't had the chance to bring in the talent that he wants. So probably going to be a tough year for Illinois. So, I'm asking you this on the spot. This is a data-driven question, so feel free to say I don't know. But we've talked know. a lot about like third-year coaches. You know, that's when they get their their guys are in there further. And does that window change at all with the transfer portal stuff? I because I don't know, and you can say I don't know yeah. either. But like it is, it is a shift, like you were talking about. Do you think that window will shift with what is somewhat a new era in college football? It's hard to give a data. Based response right there right. because the transfer portal is you know i mean the the, the transfer rules have changed re relatively recently so so i don't know uh obviously we've already talked about usc <laughs> multiple times but like they're they're using it um i have a couple other uh like nebraska's using it because scott frost needs it yeah. and uh you got to pay attention to that kind of stuff right um I know we talked about Bill enough, but he, he certainly deserves it. Like I just go to, I go to his write-ups. So he has some write-ups. I think, I think you need to sign up for ESPN plus, but it's you should sign up for ESPN plus just so you can watch Bundesliga. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, I mean, it's like kind of the best deal ever. And you get Bill Connolly. So he'll, you know, he'll devote, I don't know, 300, 400 words to every program to give like, what's the biggest question here. You know, are they loading up on transfers? And the answer is yes for Nebraska. And the answer is no for Clemson, despite how bad, that offense was last year. So a um, couple hundred words to get you ready for every team. Uh, it's the resource I use. So if, if, if you want to, if you want to bet these win totals and you want to bet games, I would, I would highly recommend checking those out. Yeah. Read Bill Connolly is just good advice. Just, just good advice broadly. Uh, read and listen to Bill Connolly is good advice for college football. Okay. Let's go now to the sec and talk about the win totals there over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any teams popping for you on the sec side of things for this year? So the numbers really like Auburn over six and a half. And you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, they were one and four in one score games last year. So that's going to tend to regress to 500. Uh, if you remember, they played, they played Alabama really tough towards the end of the year. I think they were up in that game or, you know, that was a one score game uh, against a team that made it to the national title game and uh, lost a lot of close games towards the end of the season, got off to a good start. It's Brian Harson's first year. And then, you know, I mean, there's a lot of drama because it's Auburn and it's a big blue blood program and they decided to keep Harson, So he's there and there's a huge number of turnover um, uh, in the coordinator positions and stuff over the off season. And, you know, they do have a question at quarterback. Bo Nix was never that good last year. Uh, they, they bring probably Zach Calzada uh, from, who played at Texas AM last year is going to come over, probably win the job, but you know, not, uh, not inspiring too much confidence there at the quarterback position, but the defense should be great. The defense was pretty good last year. Um, there's always a lot of talent and, and in general, there's always a lot of talent at Auburn. That's never really the issue. So you're looking at six and a half win total, right? So, uh, so you are probably got four wins that you can count on the three out of conference and mizzou in in the out of division game and then you're probably not beating georgia and alabama so let's eliminate those so the the rest of the games by my numbers look essentially toss-up ish um so that's six other games so you know you got to hit three of those to to go over so you, so um i haven't bet this yet uh, yeah. But I'm very intrigued by it. Uh, I think it is something that, you know, there, there's not 
like when when you look at and, and I'll post all these win totals from this public model on the site. They're not up yet, but you know, there's not a ton of differences, right? It's it's tough to find uh, too many teams where the, where the projected win total is different from from what the markets have. This is one of them, and I actually think you can kind of understand why the market is a little low, just with the drama there, with the, the questions about Harson. But it's Auburn, <laughs> you know. You can you can kind of imagine like a ten win team. Uh, you can imagine it all going to crap and uh, a three win team, maybe, right? Yeah. So I think there's a wide range of possibilities here. And um, yeah, so, so that's one that the numbers like. All right. So I want to quiz you or take, ask you a question here because you can get a different number depending on where you go. FanDuel, you get the push at six because it's at six flat and it's minus 115 on the over. If you go to <clears throat> redacted, a uh, different sports book, uh, you can get over six and a half at plus 135. Is that plus money worth it for you given how many toss-up gains they have over six and a half at plus 135 or do you rather have the leniency of the push at six at FanDuel at minus 115 that's actually something you can quantify yeah. and I have some code to do that so uh yeah I mean you can just run some simulations and figure out the odds and, and which one better exactly on six yeah I I don't have the answer off the top of my head but uh I don't know. I mean, it, it feels like I would rather bet over six and knowing that it has a pretty decent likelihood of landing on six. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So check that out. Uh, that one is six at FanDuel minus 115 on the over and the Illinois under four and a half is plus 110 at FanDuel as well. Any other win totals you like for this year where you're finding value FanDuel has? I think most. I don't think they have all 131 up, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, bummer for you building out your uh, win total model no. there. But any others popping for you right now? I think last time I checked, I, I, we don't want to throw John Sheeran on the bus. I think they were just missing a couple of independents. Okay. The New Mexico yeah. is in the New Mexico states of the world. Uh, yeah, let me throw a couple more at you. Um, they actually think a, a, the the numbers suggest a massive edge on Arkansas under seven and a half. And Sam Pittman has come in and done a great job over two years. Like this program was a mess and they had uh, a really good season last year. They're pretty good on on both sides of the ball so i feel like this number in the market is a nod to say we like sam Pittman, we trust this guy but you know they, I mean, it, it's, it's hard it's hard to be a good coach in in the sec west and, and a lot of people have tried to do it with varying levels of success uh they they do get the quarterback back uh on offense so they should be good they do lose three of their key receivers and they lost a ton on a defense that was, that was pretty good last season. So they're rebuilding with, with transfers there. So it, it's, it's, this seems like one where the numbers kind of don't support the optimism over the coach. I feel like that's kind of what uh, the, that analysis is saying to me um, that it really did like Arkansas under seven and a half wins. Let me pull up. The total. It was Arkansas. Yeah, it had the the model had it at six and a half. Okay, that's about as big as a difference as you will see. Um, so, you know, not 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 to necessarily say the market is wrong in that. I mean, maybe there's something I'm missing, and maybe Pittman is great, but it it the numbers don't seem to to match that up. Um and uh. Yeah, so another one that I've been thinking about is Michigan State. So this is a team that I thought was colossally overrated. And just remember all the biases that I have living here in Ann Arbor <laughs> uh, and the fact that Michigan State did beat Michigan last year. Um, but last year, that Michigan State team was a team that kind of got fortunate in terms of big plays, like as in they got a lot of them on offense. Uh, that helped them a lot, and they – did not give up a lot of them on defense. And, and the reason I say that is when you look at the yards per play versus success rate on offense and defense, the yards per play were significantly better uh, than the success rate. So on both sides of the ball, they were, uh, they, 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 they were fortunate in terms of, of not giving up big plays. Uh, I think the defense was particularly bad. And uh, I think they were in the eighties when I look at success rate adjusted for who you played the good news is that they bring a lot of those guys back. Uh, the bad news is that 
they might not be very good football players. Uh, I do like Peyton Thorne as the quarterback. I think he's pretty solid. He's got one of his top receivers back. Kenneth Walker's gone. Probably matters a little bit because we're talking about college right. and not the NFL. Running backs do matter there. Also, you were talking about explosive plays, and most of those are probably Kenneth Walker. On the a lot, a lot of those. That, yeah, Michigan had a really hard time tackling that dude last year. Mm-hmm. So seven and a half wins for Michigan State, and the model is pretty much at seven and a half. Uh, I would definitely lean under. Uh, if, if you were to bet this, I would definitely suggest the under. I, I don't think I, – I can see a situation where the bottom falls out and everyone – is uh, asking a lot of questions about giving Mel Tucker that obscene contract. Uh, I think he's got a lot to prove. He had a good season last year, so let's mm-hmm. give him credit for that. But, you know, not not a ton of wins at Michigan State before that, not a track record before that. I personally think he's got a lot to prove, right, to, to live up to that contract that that he got, and we'll see whether he can do it. I mean, he certainly has a good, good start with the quarterback there, but uh, I think he's got a lot to prove. Yeah, uh, the under there is a plus 100 at FanDuel Sportsbook on uh, seven and a half. But also we got to mention uh, Mel Tucker uh, timing king because he signed that extension last year, I believe right before the Ohio State game yep. where they got toasted. toasted. And so even if they regress, full respect to our finesse king Mel Tucker for getting that contract done before the Ohio State game, before... Stuff got real bad in that game. They might go under this year, but salute to you, sir, for getting that contract done well, before that game. Let, let's, uh, I mean, he probably had nothing to do with that. That's his agent. I have no idea who his agent is, but that was <laughs> either way. Timing. Someone and, deserves a raise. That's well, all I can like, say. We could look back upon this and say, look, Ohio State had the greatest wide receiver room ever in college football. And that might have uh, it again this year, uh, part two. <laughs> Well, maybe. Well, they, they lost first two first round draft picks, right? So, yeah, but they got another one who was their best receiver in the room last year who is coming yeah. back. So Jackson Smith Najiba is, is just insane. And yeah. some of those other guys could be just as good. So, um, but like, you know, when you talk about, we could be sitting here in five years, like watching th- those three guys just dominate the NFL. I yeah. mean, that, that's a distinct possibility. And then maybe, you know, that's that's the pass that Mel Tucker gets and the secondary gets better heading into the 2022 season now. And it, and it's all fine. But but yeah, I mean, I think that was a perfect example of just just how like they, they didn't get it done on defense. Um, yeah. And and the the lack of explosive plays earlier was 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 very helpful for the Michigan State team. Yeah, if they have some regression on offense in terms of those explosive plays, that could further expose the defense and those issues there. So uh, some frailty in the Michigan State team. So Ed likes the under 7.5 at plus 100. That's all we got here for today on our final preseason edition of covering the spread for college football because next week, there are actual games. We'll still have a show next week, talk college football before I hop on a flight, my Aer Lingus flight out to Dublin to go watch the Cats uh, over in Ireland. But it's going to be a blast. It was fun to talk some college football with you, Ed, talk about your numbers. Uh, you mentioned that some of these numbers are public. If people want to find your public numbers, where can they get those and where can they sign up to become a member to get the non-public member numbers? The public numbers are, are at the power rank. Dot com. It's actually all at the power uh, So you can check out the college football rankings that will be uh, available by the time this podcast uh, drops. And then I will post the win total projections from that on the site. And then you can also figure out how to become a member. Um, feel very good about my college football model heading into this year. Uh, and um yeah. Also, I mean, and to get it to kind of get a taste for what is going on, uh, I would suggest signing up for the email newsletter. I, I give a sample of of some of my member predictions and some thoughts on on about those predictions. So you can sign up for that at thepowerrank.com. Anything going for on for you on the football analytics show for this week? Yeah, I haven't done the interview, but uh, there will be a pod. And then uh, definitely check out the episode with Bill, getting some really nice feedback on that, on his yearly appearance. And then, you know, we're a couple of weeks away from the preview series yeah. for the football analytics show. So this is like a daily series. Uh, it'll start on August 28th or 29th or whatever that Monday is. So these episodes are about 10 minutes long and uh, just give you a number based perspective for both betting and thinking about the 2022 season. 
And you launched, launched college. your Patreon this week as well. Yeah, we launched, uh, you Patreon. launched the Patreon. Yep. That's exciting. How uh, you happy with things so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just honored that people listen, and yeah. um, a fraction of them are are willing to part with their hard earned money to support me. That's always uh, it's just an honor. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, no, it, it's uh, it's good. I'm I'm looking forward to doing it more. There are some uh, patron only episodes. So there's mm -hmm. one on home and rest advantage in the NFL, which is interesting because I was kind of very surprised with the results and the journey that it took to get there. So yeah, so every month there'll be, you know, there'll be one premium episode. Perfect. Love to hear it. Uh, excited about that. Congratulations to you on launching that. And uh, go check out all of Ed's work at thepowerrank.com and check out the uh, podcast as well on the Football Analytics Show. Check out the Patreon. I'm sure you can get links to that over at the Power Rank as well. Find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. As a reminder, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow, breaking down some MLB money lines for Thursday. They'll be looking aheads because I'm recording it Wednesday night, but should get you a better number at that point as well. Then talking some NASCAR for Watkins Glen this weekend on the Thursday show. Find that right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Good luck to you with all your college football win bets. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to get you set for some more quality bets. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 